Our special guest today is Max Acemus, and this is all you need to know to realize how good this young man is. He is tied with Larry Bird for the 17th most points in the history of college basketball on the D1 level, chasing down names like the great Danny Manning, the big O, Oscar Robertson. I mean, this dude is doing it all. So let's bring in Max. First off, what's your reaction when you see your name at the same spot as Larry Bird? Man, that's pretty cool, you know, uh, to, to see my name up there with a great like Larry Bird. Um, you know, it's really a testament to, you know, all the hard work I've put in and uh, really the, the, my teammates and coaches that I've had that have invested so much in me. So how's it going so far in your first season here at the University of Texas? Man, I'm enjoying every part of it. Um, kind of really taking it day by day. Um, you know, really trying to stay in the moment and not look too far ahead. It's going pretty fast too. You know, we're already in January, but I'm enjoying every part of it um, and, and being a Longhorn. So let's talk about your journey, right? Started in the state of Texas, began on the college level at Oral Roberts. Describe your game in high school and what led you to Oral Roberts. Yeah, I mean, I always had a reputation for kind of being a shooter um, and, and the, the Summit League is a shooting league. And so, um, you know, it was actually recruited by Coach Springman, um, you know, really showed love to me from day one. and. Um, I didn't have too many options coming out of high school um, and I ended up going to Oral Roberts, um, felt at home for me um, and just looked to go in there and, and work, work to um, keep improving, keep getting better every single day, um, just putting myself in the best position. So how did you feel, I'm sure as a young man with a lot of confidence that you didn't have a lot of options coming off a very good high school career? You know, I was, I'm big on control what you can control. Awesome. Um, and so I didn't, couldn't control, you know, what coaches recruited me and what coaches didn't. Um, for me, it was the coaches that did recruit me um, and gave me an opportunity to come into the program. And, um, you know, Oral Roberts was one of them, um, and, and I'm forever grateful. So what happened there to make it click so quickly? Because you were scoring and doing your thing instantly at Oral Roberts. Yeah, I think um, just coming in as a freshman, um, trying to do anything I could to get on the court, um, and then going into my sophomore year, um, you know, losing a lot of older guys, kind of taking that next step in my game of kind of transitioning to being more of a point guard, um, knowing that if I want to play at the next level, you know, I have to transition to being more of a point guard. And um, kind of from there, it kind of just took off. I mean, you were the national leading scorer, right? Like, you, you did it in the NCAA tournament, Sweet 16. Uh, you were making all the shots, getting all the awards, leading your team. At what point, though, in that process did you realize if the opportunity arises, I can play at a bigger program. Yeah, I think uh, during that, my sophomore year, um, you know, playing a lot of, of, of high major teams, um, you know, seeing some of the success that, um, you know, I was having there um, and kind of just uh, knowing the work that I've put in and I have, you know, so much confidence in myself because I put in so much work in the gym um, to when I get into those situations, just go out there and be me. Um, and so, um, you know, after my last year there, I'm um, kind of looking at the situation I was in and, um, you know, what would be best for my career um, and, and trying to get to the, to the next uh, stage. Guys have been transferring for so long, even before NIL became part of the college landscape. Why did you decide to stay so long at Oral Roberts? I think for one was the coaching staff there for me, um, just the relationship that I had with them and built up. Um, and, you know, they had so much trust in me. Um, and so that was a big thing. And then um, kind of going back there and, and wanting to win again and get back to the NCAA tournament. And then when the opportunity presented itself, changing coaching staff, you enter your name in the transfer portal, you end up at the University of Texas with RT. Why Texas? Why Rodney Terry? Yeah, I mean, for one, being a, a Texas kid, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to pass up coming back home and, and representing the state. Um, but, but really looking at the culture and the program, I mean, it's an expectation here to win. And, you know, that's what I want to do. Uh, and then, you know, a great coaching staff, you got RT, um, kind of talking with him, uh, building that relationship from day one, um, and kind of looking at kind of what we, what we saw for myself, um, you know, coming into the program um, with the goals and aspirations that I had and, and he had, and they all aligned and it was a perfect fit. And a lot of people are, are thrilled to have you here at the University of Texas because you're already doing great things. What was the process like though for you to find your voice? And what is your voice? Are you a rah-rah guy? Are you a leader? Do you kind of go with the flow? How did that play out? Yeah, I mean, uh, I've always kind of continued to try to improve my leadership skills. Um, I think I'm big on, um, you know, doing just like showing actions you know more than than saying it too much yeah um you know i'm gonna go out there and i'm gonna play hard and you know i'm not gonna ask you to do anything that i'm not doing myself and um you know kind of build that that culture from top to bottom and the game winners man i mean that's what people love to see right hitting shots and clutch moments and you've done that on multiple occasions now we're gonna pop up the video you can see it on the monitor here let's break it down starting with louisville 
let's see. So got the ball in the Kindle, came back, um, looked at the clock, and kind of the court was spread, and took, took a couple dribbles, got to my spot, and I knocked down the shot. And then we have the winner. And that, that's coming off in Madison Square Guard too. So that's like big time. I mean, that's that's the, the mecca right there where you hit that shot. Now we have the one against Cincinnati. Break this down. Yeah, um, you know, coming across half, you know, we, we didn't take a time out. Um, knew that we would have time to get to what we wanted to. Me and Double D in the little two-man game right here. Um, and, and seeing an opening to my spot in the corner and got right down the hill to it and knocked down the shot. What happens to you in that moment when the game is on the line? I'm just thinking, go win it, you know, whatever it takes to win. Um, and, you know, I put in so much work that um, it's a shot that I practice all the time. So that way, you know, when the lights come on, I can knock it down. So we were talking with RT about your range. Like you walk in the gym and you can hit from anywhere. Where's like the deepest on the court where you feel like you can consistently make this shot? Like this is makeable for me. Uh, I mean, I was probably like the, the middle between three point line and half court. I mean, um, kind of stretch the defense out a little bit, make them have to guard me higher up. And when did you develop that range? Like, when did that start clicking? Uh, really, uh, probably my sophomore year. Um, you know, just being a shooter, um, people playing me so hard, um, just kind of finding a way to space them out more, uh, keep them honest, and, you know, ultimately open up more space for everybody, um, opening space for my teammates as well. All right, so the one question that you've probably had to hear over and over and over since arriving at the University of Texas, can you do it against the Big 12, against higher profile programs with bigger guards? And the answer to that is? Yes, you know, I can. You know, I've put in so much work and um, no matter who I'm playing against, you know, I feel like I can go out there um, and, and compete, uh, you know, and just be me. It really seems like you take a lot of pride in, in the work that you've put in and maybe not being that can't miss dude at a high school, basically being self-made. How important has that journey been to you and knowing that all the success is because of what you have put into it? Man, it's huge. Um, I think it goes back to um, kind of just the way I was raised, you know, with my parents um, kind of always instilling that hard work and um, really that mindset piece of, you know, whatever you set your mind to go out there and achieve. And so, um, you know, I've always wanted to, to play at the next level, um, play professional with basketball. And so, um, I'm just every day I'm doing what I can to put myself in the best position to, to achieve that. And honestly, I hope there's a lot of young people that are in sports or just trying to do great things in life that are listening to this right now because you hit the nail on the head, right? Control the controllables. You mentioned that and your journey, just all self-improvement delivered by the power within yourself, man. That's inspiring to people of all ages. So Max, it's been fun to watch this journey and great to have that courtside seat to see you do magic right here at the University of Texas. Thank Thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to what else is in store 